Welcome to edupediaworld.com. This is Somja Jenaya, your online biology tutor. The chapter is Biodiversity and its Conservation. Biodiversity In our biosphere, immense diversity or heterogeneity exists not only at the species level, but at all levels of biological organization ranging from macromolecules within the cells to biomes. Biodiversity is the term popularized by sociobiologist Edward Wilson to describe the combined diversity at all levels of biological organization. The most important of them are genetic diversity. A single species might show high diversity at the genetic level over its distributional range. The genetic variation shown by the medicinal plant Profolvia vomitoria growing in different Himalayan ranges might be in terms of potency and concentration of the active chemical that is respite that the plant produces. India has more than 50,000 genetically different strains of rice and 1000 varieties of mango is another example for genetic diversity. The second one is species diversity. The diversity at the species level. For example, the western ghats have a greater amphibian species diversity than the eastern gaps. Ecological diversity at the ecosystem level, India, for instance, with its deserts, rainforest, mangroves, coral reefs, wetlands, estuaries, and alpine meadows, has a greater ecosystem diversity than a Scandinavian country like Norway. This is the representation of global biodiversity. This is the proportionate number of species of major tags of plants, invertebrates and vertebrates seen in the earth. Patterns of biodiversity Latitudinal gradient and species area relationships are two patterns of biodiversity. The first one, latitudinal gradients. Diversity of plants and animals is not uniform throughout the world but show a rather uneven distribution. For many groups of animals or plants, there are interesting patterns in diversity, the most well-known being the latitudinal gradient in diversity. In general, species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles, with very few exceptions. Tropics, that is the latitudinal range of 23.5 degree north to 23.5 degree south, harbor, mo harbor more species than temperate or polar areas. Colombia, located near the equator, has nearly 1,400 species of the birds, while New York at 41 degree north has 105 species and the Greenland at 71 degree north only 56 species are there. India, which much of its land area in the tropical latitudes, has more than 1200 species of birds. A forest in a tropical region like Ecuador has up to 10 times as many species of vascular plants as a forest of equal area in a temperate region like the Midwest of the USA. The largely tropical Amazonian rainforest in South America has the greatest biodiversity on earth. It is the home to more than 40,000 species of plants, 3,000 species of fishes, 1,300 of birds, 427 of mammals, 427 of amphibians, 378 of reptiles and more than 125,000 invertebrates. Scientists estimate that these rainforests there might be at least 2 million insect species waiting to be discovered and named. What is so special about tropics that might account for their greater biological diversity? Ecologists and evolutionary biologists have proposed various hypotheses. Some important ones are following. A. Speciation is generally a function of time. Unlike temperate region, subjected to frequent glaciation in the past. Tropical latitudes have remained relatively undisturbed for millions of years and thus had a long evolutionary time for species diversification. The second one, tropical environments, unlike temperate ones, 
are less seasonal, relatively more constant and predictable. Such constant environments promote niche specialization and lead to a greater species diversity. And the last one, there is more solar energy available in the tropics, which contributes to the higher productivity. This in turn might contribute indirectly to the greater diversity. The species area relationship. During his pioneering and extensive exploration in the wilderness of South American jungles, the great German naturalist and geographer Alexander von Humboldt observed that within a region, species richness increased with the increasing explored area, but only up to a limit. In fact, the relation between species richness and area for wide variety of taxa, that is angiosperm, plant and birds, bats, freshwater fishes, turn out to be a rectangular hyperbola. On a logarithmic scale, the relationship is a straight line described by the equation log s is equal to log c plus z log a, where s is the species richness, a is equal to area, z is the slope of line or regression coefficient, c is equal to y minus intercept. Ecologists have discovered that the value of z lies in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 regardless of the taxonomic group or the region. Whether it is plant in Britain, birds in California or mollusks in New York state, the slope of the regression line are amazingly similar. But if you analyze the species area relationship among very large areas like the entire continents, you will find that the slope of the line to be such steeper than the z value in the range of 0.6 to 1.2. For example, for frugivorous that is the fruit eating birds and mammals in the tropical forests of different continents the slope is found to be 1.15. This is the graph showing species area relationship. Note that on log scale the relationship become linear. The importance of species diversity to the ecosystem. This is a question for which ecologists have not been able to give a definitive answer. For many decades, ecologists believed that communities with more species generally tend to be more stable than those with less species. David Tillman, long-term ecosystem experiment using outdoor plots provides some tentative answer. Tillman found that plots with more species showed less year-to-year -year variation in total biomass. He also showed that in his experiments, Increased diversity contributed to the higher productivity. What is stable community or what is exactly the stability for the biological community? A stable community should not show too much variation in productivity from year to year. It must be either resistant or resilient to occasional disturbances that is natural or man-made. And it must also be resistant to invasions by alien species. Loss of biodiversity. While it is doubtful if any new species are being added through speciation into the earth's treasury of species, there is no doubt about their continuing losses. The biological wealth of our planet has been declining rapidly and the accusing finger is clearly pointing to the human activities. The colonization of tropical Pacific islands by humans is said to have led to the extinction of more than 2,000 species of native birds. The IUCN Red List, that is of the 2004, documents the extinction of 784 species including 338 vertebrates, 359 invertebrate, 87 plants in the last 500 years. Some examples of recent extinctions include Dodo, that is in Mauritius, Quagga from Africa, Thailas in Australia, Stella sea cow from Russia, and three subspecies of tiger like Bali, Javan, and Caspian. The last 20 years alone have witnessed the disappearance of 27 species. These are the examples for recent extinctions. Dodo from Mauritius, Quagga from Africa, Thailas in from Australia, Stella sea cow from Russia, this is the Caspian tiger and this is an example of red gazelle from Algeria. 
What is IUCN threat list? The IUCN threat list of threatened species is also known as the IUCN threat list or red data list. It is found in 1964. It is the world's most comprehensive inventory of the global conservation status of biological species. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature, that is IUCN, is the world's main authority on the conservation of status of species. A series of regional red lists are produced by countries or organizations which assess the risk of extinction to species within a political management unit. Loss of biodiversity. What are the consequences? In general, loss of biodiversity in a region may lead to a decline in plant production, lowered resistance to the environmental perturbation such as drought, and increased variability in certain ecosystem processes such as plant productivity, water use, and pest and disease cycles. What are the causes of biodiversity losses? The accelerated rates of species extinction that the world is facing now are largely due to human activities. There are four major causes. These are called the evil quartet is the sorbicet used to describe them. The first one, habitat loss and fragmentation. Second one, over exploitation. Third one, alien species invasions. Fourth one, co extinctions the habitat loss and fragmentation this is the most important cause driving animals and plants to extinction the most dramatic examples of habitat loss come from the tropical rainforests once covering more than 40 percentage of the earth land surface these rainforests now cover not more than six percentage they are being destroyed very fast besides Total loss, the degradation of many habitats by population, also threatens the survival of many species. When large habitats are broken up into smaller fragments due to various human activities, mammals and birds requiring large territories and certain animals with migratory habits are badly affected, this leading to the population declines. The second one, over exploitations. Humans have always depended on nature for food and shelter. But when need turns to greed, it leads to over-exploitation of natural resources. Many species extinctions in the last 500 years like Stella sea cow, passenger pigeon were due to the over-exploitation by humans. Presently, many fa marine fish population around the world are over harvested endangering the continued existence of some commercially important species third one alien species invasions when alien species are introduced unintentionally or deliberately for whatever purpose some of them turn invasive and cause decline or extinction of indigenous species the nile perch introduced into the lake victoria in east africa led eventually to the extinction of ecologically unique assemblage of more than 200 species of satchel fish in lake. This is a very good example for the species in alien species invasion. The last one, co-extinction. When a species become extinct, the plant and animal species associated with it in an obligatory way also become extinct. When a host fish species become extinct, its unique assemblage of parasites also meets the same fate. Another example is the case of co-evolved plant pollinator mutualism, where extinction of one invariably leads to the extinction of other. What are biodiversity hotspots? Biodiversity hotspots are geographic areas that contain high level of species diversity but are threatened with extinction. Around the world, 35 areas qualify as hotspots. They represent just 2.3% of the earth land surface, but they support more than half of the world's plant species as endemics, that is, species found no place else, and nearly 43% of bird, mammals, reptiles, and amphibian species as endemic. The three factors that usually determine hotspots are first one, the number of total species, that is called the species richness. Second one, 
the number of unique species that is endemism the third one the number of species at risk that is for the threat of extinction this is the map showing the 34 biodiversity hotspots around the uh, conservation international or conservation dot or defines 35 biodiversity hotspots they are the extraordinary places that harbor vast number of plants animals species found nowhere else all are heavily threatened by habitat loss and degradation making their conservation very crucial to protecting nature for the benefit of all life on earth why should we conserve biodiversity there are many reasons some obvious and others not so obvious but all are equally important they can be grouped into three categories first one the narrowly utilitarian broadly utilitarian and ethical narrowly utilitarian arguments the narrowly utilitarian arguments for conserving biodiversity are obvious humans derive countless direct economic benefit from natural foods like cereals pulses fruits firewood fiber construction material industrial production like tannins lubricants dyes resins perfumes and product of medicinal importance more than 25 percent of the drugs currently sold in the market worldwide are derived from plants and 25,000 species of plant contribute to the traditional medicines used by native peoples around the world the broadly utilitarian arguments the broadly utilitarian arguments say that biodiversity plays a major role in many ecosystem services that nature provides the fast dwindling amazon forest is estimated to produce through the photosynthesis 20 percentage of the total oxygen in the earth atmosphere pollination without which plants cannot give us fruits or seeds is another service ecosystem provide through pollinators layer bees bumblebees birds and bats there are other intangible benefits that we derive from nature the aesthetic pleasures of walking through thick woods watching spring flowers in full bloom or waking up to a bulbul song in the morning ethical arguments the ethical argument for conserving biodiversity relates to what we owe to million of plants animals and micro species with whom we share this planet philosophically or spiritually we need to realize that every species has an intrinsic value even if it may not be of current or any economic value to us we have a moral duty to care for their well-being and pass on our biological legacy in good order to the future generations how do we conserve biodiversity when we conserve and protect the whole ecosystem its biodiversity at all levels is protected we save the entire forest to save the tiger this approach is called in situ or on site conservation however when there are situations where an animal or plant is endangered or threatened and needs urgent measures to save it from extinction ex situ or off site conservation is the desirable approach in this approach threatened animals and plants are taken out from their natural habitat and placed in special settings where they can be protected and given special care thank you this i am winding up this chapter in the next video we will be moving to the next chapter the environmental issues